in this back in the day meal of chicken a la king, which is a mixture of creamed chicken and uh, peas and carrots, mushrooms, which I don't have in the house, but I've, um, I've done some onions, I've softened some onions, and I've sauteed some um, peppers, little tiny peppers, green bell peppers, not hot ones, to sort of make up for the other ingredients I, I don't have right now. But you can put this mixture on top of rice, uh, my mother always served it on toast or bread, which we loved. Um, Bill has chosen to put it on the Bisquick biscuits, which he loves and tastes wonderful with that. So very quickly here, I'm starting this preparation. Have my chicken, have this, have the onions already sauteed with the peppers. And I've made the mixture per directions. I think it's, um, it says right on the box, for the drop biscuits, two and a half cups of Bisquick mix, and two thirds cups of milk. It's already in there. Now, what my mom used to add when she used Bisquick, or if she used the biscuits, was she added some Parmesan cheese. So I'm adding a third of cup of Parmesan cheese into the Bisquick mixture, just to make them a little more cheesy. Um, in that case, I might have to add just a little extra milk, which I'm going to do now. Sometimes my improvising gets me into trouble. Doesn't quite turn out the way I want it, but these biscuits are almost foolproof. So with the addition of the Parmesan cheese, it gives it a little bit of tang, and with the, usually makes about 12 biscuits, and if, there are some left over. He loves them in the morning with um, <clears throat> butter and jam. So we'll have that. So I will put these on a baking tray. They bake in the oven for approximately 10 minutes, I believe. Yeah, eight to 10 minutes. Check them at eight. And then I will start the back in the day chicken a la king recipe, which is really easy. And Moose and I are having this for supper tonight. He's waking up, he's been napping for a while, and I'm sure he's smelling all the good things going on. I did finish up stirring the caramel sauce for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And this is the sauce for the bread pudding. Um, and it's not caramelized, I made a mistake on that. It is just beautiful tasting caramel sauce. Look at that, I'm gonna show you. It did thicken up a little bit, just enough to make a great sauce. Really, really good. And in a little while, when we're probably ready to eat it tonight, I will heat up the bread pudding and um, probably put the bourbon in then, probably a teaspoon or two. And then I will send some up to Colleen and Micah because they did my shopping today and bought the bourbon. They might even get that bottle of bourbon. Now I'm gonna get these on a baking tray and then we'll start the chicken out. My Bisquick biscuits are ready to go into the oven. I did make them a little bit bigger, so I only got, I think, nine there. Um, they are called drop biscuits, so you basically just drop them on. Biscuit, Bisquick is wonderful. We use these a lot, especially with stews. The kids always love them. So I'm gonna put this into the oven, 425, I believe, for eight to 10 minutes, but I will check them at eight minutes. You wanna make sure they don't burn on the bottom. Sometimes I'll just turn them over really quickly at the end for a minute or two to brown the tops and to save the bottoms. So in the oven it goes, and then we'll start the chicken owl king. Did I say 425? I set the oven for 450. It is 450. Okay, I'll set the timer. Eight minutes check, but it says eight to 10. Biscuits are out of the oven. They're quite large, bottoms are just fine. 
I don't want them really to cook anymore, but because they're big, I might just turn them over and give them a few more minutes on the back, and then we'll be ready to start our chicken a la king. Wonder I'm not covered in flour at this point. I have whisked two egg yolks in half a cup, I believe, of heavy cream, and I'm going to put that in after I make the roux. I have a half cup of flour ready to go in here. The pan is hot. I've already sauteed onions and some peppers. Should have been some mushrooms in here, but uh, we didn't have any. So I'm gonna make this roux, and it's gonna be messy looking, but that's what we have to do before we put in chicken broth and milk. Okay. Uh, what it does is supposed to be mixing all together here until there's no more specks of flour. And this is basically our roux. With also, which I probably should have added first, one stick of butter. So we also had some butter going in there before. So the butter and the flour will mix to make the roux. And as soon as that's all mixed, then we can start putting the broth and the milk in. So we have a pretty buttery roux here, but no more flour. So now we're adding two cups, I believe, of chicken broth. careful with these cartons. You squeeze them and the, the broth comes up out of the top. Okay, two cups of broth. Now two cups of milk. I've made a mess here, but. One. Okay. Actually, that was supposed to be one and a half, so we'll see. Hope it'll work. All right, now we stir. And then, as it starts to come together, we will add the two egg yolks mixed in with heavy cream, and that should help it thicken. All we have to do is add the cooked chicken, which is leftover chicken. So I'm still being frugal and trying to use up ingredients from my freezer and my refrigerator. Okay, now I'm gonna add the, now really now I have to keep whisking heavily so that the yolks don't curdle on me here. Moose is asking, what smells so good in there? Look at those biscuits. They're ready to be split. And the base of our chicken a la king. The sauce is nice and thick. Look at this. Look at that. It's ready. Put the chicken in. Now remember, we're putting in cooked chicken. Did I lose my chicken? No. You have to remember, this is a 90 year old adobe, and this is my little teeny kitchen. I really don't have much space, but at least it matches the back in the day type recipes, right? I'm right in the midst of things here. So I'm gonna put in the chicken. Now for time's sake, I've already put a little garlic salt on the chicken, a little salt, a little pepper, and I'm gonna put this, actually I'm gonna put the peas and carrots in first. Now, frozen peas probably would have been nicer because they are a little firmer and greener. Um, but as I said, these days we, we use what we have. And I did have a can in the cupboard 
Ooh, that looks good. Now for the chicken. I think it called for four cups of chicken. I might have that here. Let me just check mom's recipe. No, oh. Let's see. Doesn't say how much chicken. So we just wing it, right? Oh, mom. Well, we put in what we want. Actually, I did have a lot of uh, chicken, cooked chicken that I had in the freezer and uh, there's quite a bit. So we'll, we'll put it in, play it by ear. I can't believe this sauce came out so beautiful. Maybe I'll save some and use it for maybe a chicken salad sandwich tomorrow or something. Oh, this fits in so nice with this sauce. Oh, he's gonna love this. So am I. <laughs> oh, this looks so good. I think I'll put a little more. Yeah, that won't make a pretty big sandwich, but it'll do. Okay, now we're gonna simmer this for maybe a couple more minutes. And then believe it or not, it's ready to eat. No baking, it's all done in this one pan. That looks so good. It would have been nice to have had some mushrooms in there and pimentos. We, my mother used an awful lot of pimentos. In fact, do you seniors remember the aspic molds? Oh my gosh, my mother used to make those for her bridge club luncheons. They were done in a mold, and I have several old molds around. Maybe I'll make one one day. I never liked aspic. I love jello, I love custards, but the aspic had a strange taste, but it was beautiful. And she would put rice or something in the middle of the aspic bowl. But pimentos were used a lot for that. I digress. We're not doing pimentos tonight. So this is it. Now, I'm gonna be very brave here because I think you wanna see this, all right? I'm being brave because normally when I get up to the camera like this, sometimes I have a disaster, but this is what it looks like with the chicken, the peas, the carrots, and this sauce is just perfect to go on top of the buns. So, it's been a couple of hours, I'm tired, but I'm proud of myself. I think I pulled it off. And after supper, later, we will have that bread pudding with the caramel sauce with the bourbon in it. That turned out lovely too. A great meal. Especially one that reminds you of those good old days and the meals your mom made. My dad even cooked. He made the best Sunday morning breakfast with what I have done a lot and our grandkids call them Poppy's Pink Eggs. Someday I'll show you how to make my, my dad's fried egg, a recipe from my mother's recipe box back in the day. More to come, chicken a la king, Moosey and I are ready to dig in. I think this will be two videos, one with the chicken a la king dinner and the other one with the bread pudding and the bourbon caramel sauce, which should be lovely. Thank you, Colleen, for the bourbon, but I think you're going to get this anyway. So please subscribe and give us a thumbs up and comment. I'd love to hear your comments, seniors. I know you've lived in these days with me and you have the same memories I have. Maybe you can suggest um, a memory of a meal that you remember that you would like me to cook. I'm sure it's in my mother's recipe boxes. As I said, I have several of her, her boxes. Wonderful, wonderful recipes, desserts, and um, junket. If you remember junket, let me know. She served it with a hard sauce. I so, thank you for watching. I love you all. Hang in there during this crisis. Maybe we see some rainbows around the corner for us. 
keep praying. I love you. God bless us all. Now, try some of our bread pudding with caramel and bourbon sauce, and you'll sleep great tonight.